Welcome, and thank you, Jonathan, for that intro. Could I start by saying I am slightly nervous in facilitating this online session. However, I'm also extremely grateful for the opportunity to share my phys ed story. Could I please ask that all participants ensure that they've downloaded the required materials for this session. A link has been provided in the Tozzle back channel and is also on the whiteboard beside me. We should have three to four minutes to do this before we kick things off. I would like to extend a massive thank you to the Physiotagogy team for their vision and their passion that moves our profession forward. But most importantly, I would like to offer my congratulations to anyone who has decided to tune into one or more of the many online professional learning experiences that have been offered over the last 24 hours. Your thirst for knowledge that will improve your understanding of physical education is a mark of the respect and the importance that you hold for each and every student in your class. And to steal a few words from the first ever Phys Ed Summit keynote, please remember, you are the difference makers. It's the positive words like that that have been shared within the online PE community over the last five years that have contributed to the reshaping of my view of physical education. I've been lucky enough to make some strong connections with people such as Andy Vasili, Dean Dudley, and Andy Hare, and his Aussie Phys Ed crew. These connections have reignited my passion for quality physical education at a time where it's easy to say that I had pretty much given up and was comfortable playing games and rolling the ball out in PE. So I feel this is more than just the story about the potential relationship between high intensity interval training and physical education. And it's more of a story of my journey to seeing ways to overcome some potential barriers to quality physical education and develop the confidence to improve my professional practice. UNESCO identify quality physical education as planned, progressive, and inclusive learning experiences that are the essential entry points for the development of life skills and positive behavior patterns. Reflecting on my experience, I ask you guys, how does rolling the ball out in PE achieve any of this? In my opinion, we have many ambassadors of quality physical education within the online PE community. I've been lucky enough to meet a few of these passionate educators over the last 12 months. And when speaking to these people, I've been able to identify some commonalities. One thing that stands out when speaking to these educators with diverse approaches to their teaching is their ability to identify that quality physical education must be framed to meet the needs of the students within the communities they work with. As educators, we have a responsibility to identify the barriers that we face and find ways to work through or move around these so that we can mold and shape the existing curriculums that we work with to ultimately improve and strengthen the lives of each of the kids in our care. Quality physical education is no different to quality education. We have the same tools available to us as, the, as our colleagues in other disciplines. Learning experiences should be experiences. They should be active and framed with clear learning intentions, meaningful and relevant learning provocations, success criteria that allow students to know where they are and where they need to get to. We also need to place an emphasis on focused questioning techniques and relevant feedback so that we can make learning meaningful. Quality physical education is so much more than a good game or a fun activity. I believe in walking the walk and not just talking the talk. So in the spirit of that, I've used these tools to shape and frame the learning within this session. As we attempt to explore high intensity interval training and assess its impact on quality physical education. With the driving question, high intensity interval training, is it a hit for quality physical education or should we give it a miss? Now the learning intention template has been included in the resource package for this session. 
the teaching goal for this session is that participants will have the opportunity to know about the methods of improving students' health and learning within a PE class setting. Participants will understand how each method influences student motivation in a PE setting. And finally, participants will develop the skills to be able to think critically about meeting health and educative outcomes within a PE class concurrently. We all come into this learning environment with different levels of understanding. So it's important that we take it some time to map our own learning path. I hope I'm able to help unlock the conditions to achieve, achieve success. So please take a minute or two to complete the success criteria and learning intention template. There are two steps to completing this process. The first is to read through the success statements and identify what you feel you could confidently achieve before we begin to unpack the content for this session. Remember, it's okay if you identify yourself as a novice. Everybody starts at that point at some time. Even people with the PhDs in physical education were at some point a novice. Once you've identified your starting point, read through the success statements again, and then assess where you would like to end up. Set yourself a goal that is realistic and you feel achievable in this 40 minute session. You may feel confident in jumping three to four levels, but you may also feel confident in, in, in attempting to progress one level. That is all up to you. Once you have identified your goal, if you turn the sheet over, you'll see there's a space to create your own personal learning intention. Now we do this by merging the success statement with statement A or statement and statement B. I'll give you two minutes to get this done. Okay, now that you've had a couple of minutes to complete that task, and if you're feeling confident, you'll have the opportunity to share your personal learning intention with the online community by using Worksheet 1. You'll see that there is a post-it note where you can transfer your learning intention into that space. In a classroom setting with students, I like to use post-it notes as a quick and simple way to make learning visible. Because we have the challenges of an online presentation, we'll be able to do this slightly differently. And you can take a photo of your learning intention and use the hashtags on the whiteboard to share the, the photo via Twitter. Hopefully, this will then lead to a bit more of discussion uh, in the Tozzle back channel and then possibly afterwards in, in, in the Voxer chat that has been scheduled. 
it's important to point out that throughout this presentation, I'm asking you to think like a student and put yourself in their shoes so that at the end, you can make an, in so that you can make an informed decision as a teacher. It's also important that I point out that at the bottom of the previous worksheet, there is a section which says, my phys ed wonderings, what ifs, and further questions. Now, as we move through the content in this session, it's a good space to write down more questions that you may have and want answered, and we can do this in the scheduled Voxer chat. But in saying that, I've been talking for way too long already. And as I said, this would be an interactive session. So I hope you have your athletic shoes on and you have a space around you where you can move so that we can take on this first hit challenge where we will be completing one Tabata cycle. It is important to remember that one of the main principles of HIT is that we are exercising with an elevated heart rate. We are trying to work at our maximum intensity. We should notice during these activities that we cannot speak and our breathing is increased. In saying that, our target heart rate will vary depending on our age. The formula used to calculate our target heart rate is on the whiteboard. I'm 35 years old, my target heart rate is 148 beats per minute, and that is at 80%. To make things easy, because in a Tabata cycle, the recovery is quite short, we can check our pulse in a six second period by counting out 15 beats in those six seconds. If you are older than I am, that number will slightly decrease. If you are younger than I am, that number will slightly increase. So I hope you're ready to follow along with the first video. Okay, DJ, hit it. Workout started.
Set Go. Okay, awesome job. Now that we've experienced hit and have a chance to recover, let's complete the first checkpoint card that is located on worksheet one. If you use the checkpoint card to write down your thoughts so far in relation to the driving question, you can share your response by taking a photo and using the hashtags on the whiteboard to share on Twitter, just as we did with the learning intention. This checkpoint system is something I've picked up that helps me ensure that learning in my classes is meaningful and focused. I ask students to do two things. The first is that they complete the checkpoint point card and present this as evidence of their learning. Then I ask them to rate their level of understanding using the solo taxonomy matrix. I've created a visual representation of how this would look in my class. A number of teachers use clickers to streamline the data collection. So please take two minutes to do this now. Okay, well done. Time's up. I feel, I feel that we are picking up momentum. Now, as I mentioned earlier, about five years ago, I was going through a bit of a rough time and I had lost interest for what was happening in my class and I was getting comfortable to play games and just roll the ball out in PE. I guess people call this stage of the career burnout. During this time, I was going to TAFE at night and doing a course so I could exit teaching and become a landscaper. By doing this, I was able to identify many links in the way the course was run that I could bring back into my own teaching. At the same time, I was lucky enough to connect with Andy Vasily and learn about the importance of reflection. This was pivotal, and when reflecting, a question that I often wrestle with is what is the mission of PE? I find the answer to this question it changes so often, and it can make what we do seem very complicated at times. And even though I've approached this question from many different angles, I always end up at the same crossroad. And that is, I do not have enough available time to effectively do everything that has been asked of me. So what is most important? Student health outcomes or the educative outcomes? For a very long time and without a second thought, I would always prioritize physical activity and slip the educative focus in where I could. 
This seemed like a no-brainer, as students in a PE class need to move at a moderate to vigorous intensity for 50% of class time before any health outcomes can be achieved. So inspired by the work I was seeing on Twitter, posted by many of my online colleagues and John Ratey's book, Spark, I made some major changes to my approach to teaching. And after about 18 months, I was on the home straight to solving this complex problem. I'd modified my learning environment in my health class to look like a gym, attempting to maximize movement as I felt as hypocritical to be speaking about the importance of movement while kids are seated at their desks. In, in addition to this, I would also run all of the content delivery and explicit instruction for PE lessons from the same room, trying to layer a focus of health and learning on top of each other to double dip at my available time. My observations and student surveys indicated that students were enjoying PE and were more actively involved. All I needed was um, some sort of measure to prove to my principal that the kids were still learning effectively. At that time on Twitter, I saw Dean Dudley was working on a physical literacy continuum. And with my very limited understanding of, of what physical literacy actually was, I thought, perfect, this is too easy. I continuum, I can pre, I can post test, and I'll have some evidence of their learning. This will be finished in a couple of weeks. So I went to a PE conference and I pestered Dean about my thoughts on Spark and how I thought it could be I could use the physical literacy continuum. And all it took was 15 minutes talking with Dean and then I realized I was so, so far from the solution that I thought I was working towards. After I sent a number of emails, follow-up emails with uh, counter-arguments and questions and we'd had a few further conversations, Dean posed a very powerful question and he said, how is what you do any different to that of an overpaid personal trainer? And there it was, the reference point, you know, the start of what would become uh, my current research project. And where we have come from that powerful question is very interesting. And as a research student of Macquarie University and under the guidance of Dr. Dean Dudley, I've had the privilege of conducting a pilot study that compares two groups exposed to interventions to increase the health and educative outcomes of students. Intervention group one took part in a PE program designed to have students be active at a moderate to vigorous intensity for 50% of their class time. Many of the gold standard PE programs worldwide have been developed using this thinking. Treatment B received a high intensity interval training intervention, which was designed following the findings and recommendations provided in the 2015 paper by Sarah Costigan and her colleagues. A range of instruments were used to conduct assessments of the study population at baseline and post-intervention. This was done to detect changes in cardiorespiratory fitness, muscular fitness, speed and agility, students' motivation towards PE, and finally, the lesson context. A 10% test-retest group performed all assessments within seven days of initial testing. Intervention effects for each variable were examined using measures of central tendency. Unadjusted means, mean difference, and effect sizes were all reported. An intention to treat analysis strategy was used as this best reflects the true nature of a school environment. At baseline, between group analysis revealed there were no significant difference for each variable, so the groups were determined to be comparable. Post-intervention analysis demonstrated improvements across both groups of students for measures of cardiovascular health, muscular fitness, speed and agility. An interesting finding was that a comparison of the effect size of the each intervention showed there was no difference between the two groups. This was most notable in the measures of cardiovascular health. In addition to this, in regard to the lesson context, systematic direct observation revealed there was a 93% chance that a student exposed to the dynamic physical education treatment will have accrued a higher percentage of moderate to vigorous physical activity than a student in the high intensity interval training group. This means that we can say with a degree of certainty that as expected, students were more active in the dynamic physical education group. However, there was no significant difference in the improvements gained in student health measures. The only difference was the amount of lesson time that was dedicated to achieving this result. Significant intervention effects were noticed for the provision of feedback within the high intensity interval training group 
when compared to the dynamic physical education group. My belief is that by front-loading the lesson with a short, sharp focus on meeting students' health needs, the pressure to keep students active is removed from the teacher and they are more comfortable to take the required time to allow students to slow down and process what is happening in the class. Finally, students completed the perceived locus of causality questionnaire, pre and post intervention. The dynamic physical education group had moderate intervention effects for the IPLOC, while the mean value of the high intensity interval training group, it did not change. This highlights that the dynamic physical education approach used within the pilot study increased student motivation towards uh, physical education. It's also important to recognize that the HIT group's motivation towards PE did not decrease. It has been hypothesized that the high demanding nature of HIT would have a negative impact on the motivation levels of students to take part in this physical learning experience, and it would lead to exercise avoidance. Both the Costigan study and the pilot study found this was not the case, as participants who took part in the HIT interventions completed programs with high retention rates and session adherence. Well, that is a content dump if I've ever delivered one. Three main things come out of all that. The first is that student health measures, there is no significant difference between the two groups. The main difference is the time allocated to achieve this outcome. The second noticeable thing is that in terms of students' motivation, the dynamic physical education group shows a moderate increase, whereas the HIP intervention group they, their, their level of motivation to remain the same. Within the HIT group, the amount of feedback provided was increased by over three standard deviations. That's a significant change in the learning process. Now, I'll leave you to think about that for a little while as we jump up and we have a go at another HIT session with a few small changes to try and increase student motivation. Okay, DJ, hit it.
rest. Ready, set, go. sessions that you've done with ease and you're probably wondering why was an idiot wearing a mask and why can't he do bicycle crunches I can only answer one of those questions there is a lot of evidence showing that when we deliver hit with an authoritarian approach the, our intrinsic motivation to completing that type of physical activity decreases and we become reliant on external influences to motivate us this is important for us to recognize and address in a PE setting if we want to promote lifelong physical activity among the students we teach. And that's where the mask comes in. Themes are a great way to remove the authoritarian approach while keeping a solid structure to the routine. Using a theme allows us to tap into student interests and provide some perceived autonomy. So it's important to have fun, especially when you are asking students to perform tasks of a demanding nature. With that said, it's time to check your understanding for the second time. So let's complete the checkpoint card two that is located on worksheet one. Again, take a couple of minutes to process all that we have covered and see if your thinking has changed in relation to the driving question. You can share your responses as we have done previously. Alright, so this is probably a good time to point out that I'm in no way advocating that because HIT 
is a time efficient way to meet student health outcomes that we should reduce the allocated time to PE or that we should reduce the physical education that occurs in our classes. That would not benefit the students in our care in any way. We must be more efficient with the time we have available to us and increase the amount of physical education that occurs in our schools and our students are exposed to. HIP has the potential to boost our practice and allow us to achieve health outcomes earlier in our lesson so that any physical activity after that point becomes a very healthy bonus for our students that is partnered with deeper learning. Now that I've finished my final pitch, it's time for me to ask you to jump up one more time as we experienced the last variation to the delivery of HIT. Themes are a great first step. However, gamification is a fantastic second step as students can set themselves a target and also feel a sense of achievement when completing a very demanding physical task. An easy way to do this is to use their heads and tails game. During the rest periods, students either place their hands on their heads or their tails to indicate a choice that they've made. The teacher then flips a coin that decides what activity each student will do. Students who make a correct guess perform the activity on the screen, while the students who make an incorrect choice perform a challenge activity set by the class. Students get 10 points for every correct choice or every correct guess that they make. If a student scores a perfect 80 points, they receive a reward. Now with the limitations of our online learning environment, I'll let you know that the class has selected mountain climbers as our challenge activity for the day. So, okay, are we ready? This is the last one of the day. DJ, hit it. Workout started.
ready, set, go. sessions for the day it's now time to reflect on all that we have covered and complete the last checkpoint card this card asks you to write down your final thoughts in regard to the driving question high intensity interval training is it a hit for quality physical education or should we give it a miss there are also two other post-it notes to complete the first is a reflection card and the second is a exit ticket. It would make my day to see a few of these on Twitter, so please feel free to take a photo and share them. I'll double your time so you can get this done. Thank you. 
okay? We've made it to the end. And I'd like to finish the same way that I started, and that is by thanking the Phys Edagogy team for their vision and their passion. Most of the tools that I've mentioned in today's session have been unpacked at a deeper and more precise level in previous Phys Ed summits. I've created a list of these presentations and included it in the resource folder if you'd like to explore these concepts further. In summing up, I would like to draw upon one of my favorite sporting quotes. The words of Vince Lombardi represent the mentality that we need as modern facilitators of physical education. There is so much asked of us and we are a small part of the overall solution to the health problems that face our communities. However, we are a very important part of that solution. If we keep celebrating the ability to achieve minimum standards, then we are likely to keep falling short of our goal. So let's aim high and make sure we focus on including vigorous physical activity in our lessons as we relentlessly chase the target of 50% MVPA. I thank you for tuning in and participating in this session. Please remember, within your school, you may be the most significant influence that leads to a healthy and active lifestyle. Thank you.